Y'all ready to move on to the Chargers? Yep. Yes, yeah, moving on. Let's <clears throat> do it. The Los Angeles Chargers, 7-9 and nine last year. Uh, looked okay with the new quarterback. Not bad. Herbert uh, performed beyond reasonable expectations, I believe. Uh, yeah. it, the, the whole situation with um, – I just went blank on the quarterback. Uh, uh, Tyrod Taylor. That yeah. whole situation, very strange, obviously. <sighs> they, they played – in a soccer stadium with basically nobody. Uh, nobody was there in L.A. last year. It was just a weird year for the Chargers. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, there is some promise on the horizon. New coaching staff, new everything. Their needs were tackle, guard, cornerback, tight end, and wide receiver. And I could totally agree with all of those. They they took a lot. They took a lot of players. And you know that I'm a big fan of that. Their first-round pick were Sean Slater out of Northwestern. Thought it was great. It, Tremendous yeah. tackle. Didn't play last year. He opted out at Northwestern. But Chris and I went and saw him in person against Chase Young, and he shut Chase Young down. It was yes, ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Round two, they got Asante Samuel Jr. out of Florida State. Cornerback, I thought that was a really good pick. Uh, value yeah. pick at that spot. Number 77, they got wide receiver Josh Palmer out of Tennessee. That one was kind of strange to me. Tight end Trey McKitty out of Georgia in the uh, late third round. Again, a strange one, but I can see it. The talent's there. Uh, Chris Rumpf out of Duke. He was one of my favorite edge rushers uh, this season and in really over the past however many years. He's he's a talented player, maybe the most talented player on Duke's team, um, which is not hard, obviously. Fifth round, tackle Brendan Jameis uh, out of Nebraska. Linebacker Nick Neenman out of Iowa. Running back Larry Roundtree out of Missouri, which was a really good value pick. And then cornerback Mark Webb out of Georgia late. Uh, I don't hate this at all. Like, I, I think that they address some needs, and they got some pretty good value players that may not have produced at the highest level, but can absolutely produce at the next level. And and I think I think they did okay here. Yeah, I love what the Chargers did. I think they knocked it out of the park in the first two rounds. I like I had Slater just a little bit higher than Panay Sewell. I think he's an absolute beast, and I love what they did there. And let's not forget, this team got better before the draft. They didn't have to do a damn thing other than get rid of Anthony Lynn, who's in that Freddie Kitchens class of head coach. I mean, we're talking about, look, a great leader of men. You could tell that people want to play for him, but the guy had absolutely no idea what he was doing on the sideline. So even though they brought in a young D coordinator, pretty unproven in my opinion, and uh, Staley, I mean, it's addition by subtraction, just losing Anthony Lynn. And I really love the Asante Samuel pick in the second round. I was shocked that he fell that far to them. He and Derwin James have a nice relationship too. The two Florida State kids, of course, they're going to have Derwin James back. Sky's the limit for Los Angeles. The problem is the city doesn't. I've been to games in that soccer stadium. I went the year before COVID to a Packer game. And there was more, way more Packer fans than Charger fans there. They were very aggressive, at, by the way, very aggressive. We got really <laughs> drunk on the field. Uh, it was a lot of fun. But I, I think the Chargers knocked it out of the park here. I don't know a mu- b- much about Josh Palmer. I know McKitty's more of a blocking tight end, not necessarily a receiving tight end, and they did lose Hunter Henry. But I think they like that young 6'8 kid, uh, Donald Parham, from the XFL, and that kid's a red zone beast. Herbert's going to be better this year. Slater's going to really protect that blind side. I thought the Chargers, Chargers did a great job, and I love that pass rush you touched on, uh, Chris Rumpf, in the fourth round. I thought that was a fantastic pick. So overall, for me, I think the Chargers probably had the best draft in this division. Denver was really, really close, and we'll get to momentarily, but I, I really like what the Chargers did. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I, I think the Chargers, are they're up there with Denver. I think Denver was slightly better, but you're splitting hairs yeah. there. Um Slater, I was 100% with you. I actually had Slater better than Sewell as well. Not by a lot, but but I, I just think he's – I like my offensive lineman to be big, mean, and nasty, okay? And mm-hmm. he's got a mean streak. He's got a nasty streak to him. He's not afraid to, to F somebody up. And it's right? versatile. Yeah. He's and, insanely versatile, and that helps out a lot. So, well, yeah, that yeah. helps too. But, I, I mean, I think he's going to lock down the left side. And, it, it, you know, his, his versatility is not going to come into play. They're not moving him to guard, okay? And they're not moving him to the other side. Um, yeah. He, he's he's going to anchor that. What they need is health, okay? that That's what's killed the the, the mm-hmm. Chargers for so long is they need to fire every team doctor they've got, and they need yeah. to just rehire a whole new staff. 
Except um, for the guy that injected Tyrod Taylor so we could get Herbert on the no, field, right? No, you that pay was the that best thing that ever back. happened to them. It is the best thing that ever happened to him. You pay that guy his severance, and then you let him walk because yeah. that team can't stay healthy. You brought up Derwin James to work with Asante Samuel. Listen, mm-hmm. Derwin is one of the greatest what-ifs in all of football You right got now. that right. Because yeah. I think he is an absolute monster when he plays, but the problem is, is that man doesn't play football for a living. He doesn't. Yeah. Okay, I don't know what you can call what he does, but it's not play football because he doesn't. He, he's just not available on Sundays. Um, yeah. I think the Asante Samuel pick was unbelievable. I thought this guy was a first round dude. They got him middle uh, to you know, I guess right down in the middle. It was the like second 40, round, forty seven, and, and and I just can't believe that he fell that far. Me they neither. needed cornerback help. I think he's gonna. They got two of the best players. They got the two best players on the board when they draft it. No exactly. doubt. No doubt. Hundred percent. And and so I really like what this organization is doing. And um, yeah, I'm a I'm a fan. I think they're going in the right direction. I'm with you. I'm not a fan of Anthony Lynn, but I got no clue who this damn guy is that they hired. And I'm not a fan of. I, I don't know anything about the, the 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 offensive coordinator, the coaching staff that they brought in. Nothing. These are these are very unknown guys in the NFL. Yeah. Yes, yeah. no, you're you're 100 percent right. Brandon about Staley. That. I mean, so so it's easy to be a good defensive coordinator when you're the defensive coordinator with Jalen Ramsey, Aaron Donald, et cetera, Michael Brockers, that entire defense. We'll see what he does, but these young coaches have impressed. And I'm telling you, the shit my dog took this morning would be better at managing an NFL game than Anthony Lynn. There's no doubt in my mind about that. So they can't there's no way he's any worse than Anthony Lynn was last year. It has to be an upgrade. It has to be. I tend to agree with you. So We'll see what Anthony yeah. Lynn does. Where he's uh, the offensive coordinator. Where right now? Uh, he went. Uh, God, why can't I Detroit? remember? Uh, Is he Detroit? Might be Detroit. <laughs> it wouldn't shock me if it's Detroit. They always hire dumb people in Detroit, so that wouldn't shock me either. Let's see. <laughs> the double check though. Anthony Lynn is. Let's see. He played with the. Yep, Detroit Lions. That's it. Detroit Lions. Detroit Lions. Oh boy! Congratulations, Detroit. He gets to work with Jared Goff. We're we're all about that. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.